Yeah. Kim Caldwell and the Tennessee Lady Vols have rounded out their staff. They did that earlier in this week. And then Jewel Spear announced she's returning yesterday. Dave and I, Jimmy, talked yesterday about whether or not Kim Kim Caldwell's style will keep or run off more Lady Vols. But I actually want to ask you a question today. In the new landscape of women's basketball, where things are going more up-tempo, kind of like men and kind of like in football, do you think Kim Caldwell's style of play by itself will help her and help the Lady Vols recruit a lot better than they have been over the last couple of years under Kelly Harper? To say a lot better, I'm going to I'm gonna say yes, because I do think that players like that style. Now, they really like the offensive style. There will be some that are like, I got a full court press. I want to save my energy for uh, for offense. So you might have some of that going on. But but I think it will help because I think most people like to to run and they like the up tempo and they like the freelance that that avails you. So I think she'll do a much better job recruiting, in particular out of the high school ranks. Now, right off the bat, she's got to get people in the portal. And it'll be interesting to see who she gets. But here's another part of that, Caleb. When I look at it, Tennessee has got a, a several of what I would consider uh, their key returners that don't seem to fit the up tempo style. I, I don't. I don't see. Uh, I don't see Stripling fitting in that. Um, I don't see Sarah Puckett uh, fitting in that. I don't see Darby being an up tempo, run it, and um, uh, impressing player. So I think some of the players on a roster don't fit that style. Uh, but I do think the style is attractive to a lot of players. And I think it will help upgrade recruiting at Tennessee. So what do you think, how much help do you think she got by the two new staff members she hired the two assistants from other sec schools? Do you think those hires were specifically for recruiting purposes at the level she's at now? I think it, I think uh, uh, the majority of it was recruiting, but I also think that she wanted somebody that had SEC experience that knows the league. And I thought that was a smart thing to do. Uh, I was uh, talking to somebody beforehand about the staff. Do they need to get somebody, somebody with SEC experience? And I thought the answer would be yes. And I think she hired two good people. She also brought uh, Burnett, who was at uh, with her uh, previously, at uh, Marshall, and, and I think that was a good hire for her as well. So I'm, on the surface, I like her staff, and I like the fact that she got experience from the SEC, and I think it's going to be a good recruiting staff. Yeah, Dave and I were talking yesterday, and it's um, with the exception of Lane Kiffin, most coaches, I feel like, like to have a mesh of coaches they're familiar with, with their style, and coaches that can recruit and have ties to where they're going. I think what we're seeing with Kim Caldwell, I'm seeing a lot of similarities to what Josh Heupel did at Tennessee. Yeah, he brought everybody that was going to help him run his offensive system, but then he w he wanted Rodney Garner, right? Because he wanted that SEC tie, and that was a big one to get. Yeah, it was, uh, and it was uh, along the defensive line, which uh, is paramount in this league. You've got to be competent on the defensive line if you want to have a decent team, and I thought that was a really good hire for Tennessee, and not just for Garner's recruiting, but I think he's a really good position coach who develops players and gets the most out of his players. So that was a good hire. But I do think there are similarities that you're talking about. Get coaches that can coach the style of play that you want. And um, and, I, and I think that – I don't know this yet. That This remains to be proven. I think the coaches she's hired will be relatable to the players. And nowadays, Caleb, that's very important. I, I was talking to somebody the other day about the transfer portal, and this person said – Look, there are people that leave because they're not getting play in time or there's a coaching change or NIL money. But if you have a coach that develops a great relationship with the players, then they're less likely to leave you. And so I, in particular, if the NIL money is the same at your school versus an offer from another school. So I, I think that's that's really important that you relate to your players. And, and I think that uh, the Kim Caldwell – certainly can do that with her age. She's what, 34, 35. She should be able to do that. And I think she had her staff that can do that as well. Yeah, I agree. And and let me ask you a little bit about style because, you know, we talked on Friday too about Danny White's hiring. He loves, he, he clearly has a preference of up-tempo coaches and regardless of the sport and the style they play. And I get sport, I get all sports are going that way. You know, high flying offenses that score a lot of points that uh, put fans in the seats. And yes, it translates to a lot of wins. But is there still, I, I don't want to sound too old school here, but 
based on UConn winning the national title, South Carolina doing it in women's basketball, Georgia and Alabama having dynasties in football, isn't there still some truth to the matter that that up-tempo style, while it may translate to wins, won't necessarily translate to championships always? Yeah, and I'll be curious to see. Now, there was a year when Alabama, uh, even though Nick Saban uh, railed about the up-tempo and how dangerous it was, he actually implemented that and won an national championship doing it. Now, not as fast as Hypo, but he did go up-tempo non-huddle uh, without a huddle, and he had Lane Kiffin running that for him. Uh, but here's here's what I think about the uh, – if you run a more traditional offense or, or – like Michigan in football, like uh, Connecticut in basketball, I think you got to have a lot of really good players. I think that you have to have great talent to do that. I think that if you run an up-tempo, fast-paced offense, uh, that I think you've got a chance to beat a team that's more talented than you. And an example of that would be when Tennessee beat Alabama, what, 52 to 49, whatever it was a few years ago. Alabama had more talent than Tennessee did. But Tennessee's tempo – Caught Alabama off guard a little bit. Jalen Hyatt caught, what, five touchdown passes in that game. So with that style, I think you can upset some people. But if you go with the more traditional style, I think you just have to have better players. And uh, I think that's what the Connecticut men, and they also had veteran players. And the South Carolina women, they just they just had better players than everybody else. And I think that's what helped them win championships. Yeah, so what happens at the Lady Vol level if they do, because of their style, they do recruit well and they finally recruit that to the level that everybody expects the Lady Vols to recruit at, which I, I think is going to happen. And so they bring in the players that South Carolina has. At that point, the type of players. So they're let's say they're evenly matched talent-wise, the two most talented teams going head-to-head. -head. Do you think the traditional style of South Carolina or the up-tempo style of Tennessee would win out in a game like that at that point? Uh History tells me the traditional style would do it because we have not seen many people with that up-tempo. I mean, if, if you want to go out years ago, Loyola Marymount was pretty fun to watch, right? And they might score 120 points in an NCAA tournament game, but they couldn't win a national championship. So I, I would probably go traditional just because that is what has won um, championships. Uh, Patino at Kentucky in 96 – when he won a championship, he was up tempo and he shot a lot of threes and he took advantage of that. Uh, but that's rare. Most teams don't do that. Um, and you had Nolan Richardson. I guess that was more defense, but what he got the 40 minutes of hell defense that he had. Yeah. Um, so he that was that was up tempo defense, if you will. <laughs> uh, but I, I think tradition probably I would have to lean toward the tradition because it has been proven more often. Uh, it may not be as exciting in some cases. Heck, Virginia won a national championship a few years ago in basketball, right? Uh, oh and uh, they probably scored. They Did they average, what, 55 points a game? <laughs> Whatever. <They did. laughs> but but uh, uh, so I, I do think traditional would, tradition would probably win out, although I wouldn't be surprised to see. I think it's more of an outlier for a team to win a championship with an up-tempo, fast-paced, fast-break, three-point shooting team. I totally agree. And it's funny you bring that up because I, he, you know, his, he's known for his fun and gun offense and what he did at Florida. And I know it was fun to watch, but Steve Spurrier, we always forget he only won one national title. And if the BCS existed during that year, he would have zero national titles because he only won that national title because Ohio state upset Arizona state in the Rose bowl. Right. Yeah. And he got a rematch with Florida state and Florida state had, uh, had beat, Florida pretty soundly, right, in the regular season. And and by the way, and you hear about, well, if you're going to lose, you want to lose early in the year? No. The Florida-Florida State game was like the one well, of the last regular season games. And so Florida did kind of back their way into the championship game. And to their credit, they beat Florida State in the rematch. But you're right. If they had had the BCS back then, Florida would have no national championships. And the BCS came along two years later, right? Right, two years later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, this was the one period where the Bowl Alliance had the Rose Bowl tie-in, so Spurrier was lucky that Arizona State wasn't playing Florida State for the national title yeah. <laughs> that year. Yeah.